Or you can scream, shout, whine, cry, snivel, piss, moan. You can shove your opinion up your ass. That way Hussein Obama's cock has something to keep it company. And don't forget, the ever-present, the most likely, the third possibility, you are wrong and I am right. That's probably going how it's going to turn out because I am right. I am always right. I have always been right. I will always be right. And how do I do this? Simple. I do this by never being wrong. I am the great one himself, and this is Stating the Obvious, the weapons platform from which I launch the cruise missile of my intellect that homes in on and destroys stupid motherfucking statists all around the world all around the fucking globe the cruise missile of my intellect can reach around the globe it can span to the other planets like the motherfucking stargate it can travel to other worlds this is stating the obvious brought to you by the cynical libertarian society on the internet at cynlibsoc.com i am the great one himself i am your host in the control room over there on the other side of the glass is the lovely and adorable randy and you can send us email, you can send us feedback, you can send us hate mail, you can send us love messages, you can send us naked pictures, whatever you want to send us, you can send that to God, that's dog, spelled backwards, G-O-D, God, at C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C dot com. Today is February the 14th, 2013. Oh, it's Valentine's Day. Oh, Valentine's Day, it's so wonderful. Today is the day. So... The next, stating the obvious, I should be recording is part three of the series I started like 10 days ago. I ended up doing a lot more work between now and then than I thought I was going to be doing, so I haven't had a chance to pick that up. So that's coming. If you're listening to these in order and you're going, hey, where the fuck is part three, you asshole? All right, part, yeah, part three is coming. Trust me. But I have to diverge a little bit because today is Valentine's Day, and this day is already just, it's been eventful. Randy, what time is it? It's It's... It's 10.30 in the morning, and the day has already been eventful. <laughs> so, let's see, where do, where do I even start? All right, let's just start here. I get up, I'm getting ready to go to a monthly breakfast meeting that I do with other people who are self-employed or remote workers and stuff like this. It's a little sort of business socializing get-together that we do every month. I'm going to talk about that in length in a minute. So the first thing I do is check the email because, of course, you got to check email first thing because somebody may have sent some naked pictures to us here at the Cynical Libertarian Society, right, Randy? Boom, we got to check that out. Always, always, always looking for naked pictures of hot people. So, <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, all right, anyway, so first thing I'm doing, checking the email. And I subscribe to daily updates from this website. I think it's called the Daily Caller. I don't, whatever. Yeah, is it Daily Caller? I don't know. Anyway, it's a sort of right-wing pseudo-Republican news website. You know, so all the news that's fit to print from a right-wing conservative perspective. But they, they have some interesting stuff on there sometimes. It's a good source. So anyhow, I'm looking through the email of the messages they've sent out. And they have an article about a Facebook at the Facebook app. I'm going to learn how to talk any moment now. Called Bang with Friends. And what you do is you sign up for the app. And then in the application interface, you indicate which of your Facebook friends you would have sex with. And then if those Facebook friends use the app and they indicate they would have sex with you, then the two of you get a notification to each other saying, hey, <clears throat> you know, this person over here said they'd bang you and this person said they'd bang you. So you two said you would bang each other so you should get together and bang. And I saw that and it's like my morning stopped. <laughs> my morning stopped right there. It's like, okay. <laughs> Finally, Facebook is useful again. Because here's I'm I'm really and I'm not a super Facebook user. I because I have a photography business, you know, I have some pages for my photography business and I have about 160 friends on Facebook. 
and I call every now and then to knock that back down because I pretty much only Facebook friend people that I know in real life. You know, people that I, I that I friends with in real life before I go Facebook friend them. And as time goes by, I'm just I'm finding Facebook more and more useless and stupid. And it's not for me. It's not really there. Uh, Michael W. Dean over on Freedom Fiends blog wrote a post about why he left Facebook and a lot of its good reasons, privacy and all this other stuff. But one of the things he also said was just that for him it had become such a time waster and he spent so much time on Facebook and Nima on Freedom Fiends uh, podcast has also talked about how he's been on Facebook and spending time arguing with people and shit like that. And for me, it's not really that Facebook is a time waster and I, I sure as fuck don't argue with people on Facebook. Uh, if I see something on somebody else's page that I disagree with, I don't fucking argue with them about it on their Facebook page, right? I, I, that's just me. I don't. That's, that's like, I don't come into your house and then try to pick a fight with you. That's kind of how I look at the whole Facebook page thing. If you put something on your Facebook page that I disagree with, I'm not going to fucking argue with you about it on your page. That's your fucking page. You know, I know that... I know that 99.99% of the people in the world have opinions that are radically different from mine. I understand that most of you believe it's okay to murder people in foreign countries with flying robots and that it's okay, you know, to murder brown people and it's okay to murder drug dealers and, you know, it's okay to murder whatever group of people you're okay with murdering. So I, I know this. I don't need to run around arguing with people about politics and shit like that on their fucking Facebook pages. And sometimes when I post something on my Facebook page, making fun of Obama, or, and usually, and it's almost always Obama. Again, it, it's this whole, well, I'm going to talk about this in the future. I, I know I say that a lot. God, I have a whole series of stating the obvious thing, stating the obvious podcast, notes, planning phase, it's coming together. It's all going to happen pretty soon as soon as I get time to do all this. Anyway, when, when, the, when I post something negative about right-wingers, Nobody ever fucking argues with me on my Facebook page. But whenever I post something negative about left-wingers, the left-wingers, thanks to their insecurity and their small penises and the fact that they're just generally religious fanatics who need to shove their opinions down everybody's throat, which is funny because the right-wingers are the ones who are generally thought of as the religious fanatics. You know, but the left-wingers come out of the woodwork, you know, and fucking, you know, tell me about how it's okay for Obama to murder brown people in Afghanistan with flying robots because he passed healthcare reform and all this other shit. But I, you know, and I may respond once or twice and then I let it go. So for me, Facebook isn't annoying because it's a time waster. Facebook is becoming annoying for me because, and you guys have heard me do this and I'm going to do it again in the future. I have made fun of the kids the people that are on Facebook, you know, and talking about what they had for breakfast and spending all day, you know, exchanging cat pictures and shit like that. And I felt that way for a long time and I still feel that way to an extent, but I have come to a realization about social media and about Facebook in particular and about social media overall. Social media right now, February 14th, 2013, is becoming more and more and more about commercials. I mean, this is why I don't have cable television. This is why I don't listen to the radio. This is why I don't go to movie theaters because I don't need and I don't want and I don't want to sit through other people's fucking advertising of their products. And so much of social media, Facebook, Twitter, you know, especially LinkedIn, it's all becoming about advertising. And the thing is, it's not about being social anymore. And, you know, maybe it, was it ever about being social? I mean, I don't know. I, I was not in on the ground floor when things like Facebook started. I am a late adapter of new technology. I'm first one to tell you that. So I missed all of this stuff in its early days. But as you look at Facebook now, it's all about, you know, pay to get your post up at the top. And here's how you advertise on Facebook. And I go to this 
monthly meeting of business owners where we talk about using social media for advertising. You know, when I hear these things like, well, what you do is you can't post, all your posts can't be advertisements for your business. You have to post three things that don't have anything to do with your business. And then you can post one thing that's about your business and more people are going to read it. And so what you're doing is you're telling me that the only reason and this is sort of a metaphorical explanation, but the only reason you're being nice to me is so I'll buy shit from you. You know, the only reason you're posting these things that don't have anything to do with selling and advertising your business is so that when you do sell and advertise your business, I'll pay attention to you. I mean, social media is to a great extent, from, my, from what I'm seeing, from my experience of it, not about being social. It's about selling people your shit. Now, as a person who creates value for other human beings and sells things and provides services for money, you know, as a person who does not get a welfare check every month for voting Democrat, you know, I can appreciate the value of you know, making your services available, telling people what's available, advertising, running specials, you know, pimping yourself, all that other shit. I, I understand that there's a value to that, and I'm not saying there isn't. But when I'm on social media and I'm on Facebook, I don't want to see your fucking advertisement. I am there to socialize. It's kind of like, and this is going to tie into the breakfast meeting I had this morning too. We're going here. It's supposed to be a fucking social occasion. And we have people, and there's some of us who come to this thing and we go there and we do, we just socialize. But then there's this other small group of people and they're usually uh, real estate market, uh, what do you call them, realtors, they show up a lot and they're always trying to fucking hand out a business card and sell shit to people. And it's like, that is not why I'm sitting here in this restaurant having breakfast. I do not want to fucking have your fucking business card. Get the fuck away from me. And then there's these other people who come to the breakfast meetings who are the fucking religious fanatics. We have two of them who are fucking vegans who cannot fucking shut up about veganism, and we have one who is a global warming wacko. And for these people, every fucking conversation has to go back to their fucking religion, either veganism or global warming, because these people are such fucking religious fanatics that they can't hold a conversation about anything else. They cannot go for a fucking hour and a half of their life without talking about their fucking religion. And Facebook for me, my experience of Facebook is becoming exactly the fucking same. People on Facebook fall into three categories. The people who don't fucking communicate. Well, I, I shouldn't say that. There's four. There are a few people on Facebook that I interact with on Facebook socially. You know, we send messages to each other. We say stuff. Hey, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. It's a very small group. There's another group of people on there that just don't interact with me at all. They're my Facebook friends, which are not like real friends. And they, there's like just nothing. I can send them a message and they totally fucking ignore me. Then there's the people on Facebook who are on Facebook just to advertise their shit. And it's just constantly, I wrote a blog post. Look, I'm running a special. Look, wow, this is me. Look, hey, everybody, I updated my business website. Go over there and check it out and tell me what you think. I think you should get the fuck off my fucking Facebook. That's what I think. And then the fourth group is the fucking religious fanatics. The ones who just constantly post shit about how Obama is the Messiah and how we're all going to die because of global warming and how they hate corporations, which is odd because they're using Facebook on their fucking iPhone, both of which are corporations and both of which, in the process of doing what they do, release shit tons of global warming gases into the environment. But that's okay because remember... Global warming is like murder. It's only wrong when other people do it, right? When I'm burning fossil fuels and polluting the environment, it's okay. Burning fossil fuels and polluting the environment is only wrong when those Republicans do it, right? It's like murder. Murder was only wrong in war, right? War. Remember, remember when the Democrats were anti-war? War was only wrong when George Bush was president. Now that our Lord and Savior, Hussein fucking Obama, is the Messiah, now, of course, we can kill all those fucking sand niggers in Afghanistan with flying robots because, hey, they're just brown people. And besides, Obama passed health care reform. He fucking puts his pants on 
two legs at a time. He is the Lord and Savior. And if Obama says it's okay to kill people, then it's fucking okay to kill people. And if you don't agree with him, you must be a fucking racist. And so since my Facebook experience is not in any fucking way a social experience anymore, I'm just losing interest in the whole fucking thing. Not that I was ever a huge Facebook user to begin with. So then comes the app Bang Your Friends, where you can go in and you select the people who you are friends with on Facebook that you would have sex with. And I'm like, yes, this is so fucking useful. Now, in the article I was reading about this app, it also said that at one point, a similar application was released for LinkedIn, but apparently LinkedIn blocked it or something. I didn't really read the article that well. I, I'm going to go back and check it out later. But that, when I saw that, I'm like, oh my God, finally LinkedIn is useful because LinkedIn is also a great social media network. LinkedIn is a network where you can connect with people you already know and that you've already done business with and you can read their resume on the internet. Whoa, holy shit. Where do I sign up for that? That is so useful. I, and the thing is, I know some people who swear by LinkedIn as a business networking tool and a way to get business. And but you know, but that's yeah, yeah. But mm -hmm. mm. yes, Randy is interrupting me, and she makes a valid point. LinkedIn though does bill itself not as social media in the sort of same sense that Facebook does. You know, Facebook. And again, this, this, we're talking about my perceptions here, the way I perceive these networks. You know, my perception of Facebook is that Facebook is supposed to be a social place where you connect with friends and family and shit like that. LinkedIn, on the other hand, definitely conveys the image it's a business environment. LinkedIn is a place where you go to advertise your business, to talk about your business, to generate interest in your business, to see things about other people's businesses. So when LinkedIn is very commercialized in the sense that it is full of content that I would consider commercials, advertisements, people pimping themselves. You know, I mean, while I may rag on LinkedIn for doing that, when, when I step back and just, you know, stop ragging and stop having fun with it, I mean, in truth, LinkedIn is a lot more intellectually honest, I think, in that way. I mean, that's what LinkedIn is about and that's what they are about and so I can respect that. Facebook is just advertisements and advertisements and advertisements and fucking religious people. So anyhow, bang your friends app. So I thought this was great. Oh, any, so uh, the bang your friends version for LinkedIn, I'm sad that didn't happen because there are some people I'm connected with on LinkedIn that I would definitely bang. Right. <laughs> what? What? Yes, exactly. <clears throat> Sorry, that was us exchanging uh, comments there. All right. Anyway, so I set up the banger thing. And, you know, here's so then I posted on my profile. I posted on my profile about this app. And then I asked this question. And I said something to the effect of So, women, let's say that you were to install the Bang Your Friends app and then you were to click on me saying that you would bang me just you know not because you really wanted to bang me which of course is hard to imagine but just because you were curious about whether or not I would bang you my question is would you be more offended or more bothered or more upset whatever kind of word you want to use well for most people it would be offended because you fucking pussies out there get offended about everything by pussies I don't mean women I mean pussies like all of you out there on the planet earth who fucking constantly get offended about every fucking thing. Even though you don't have a problem moralizing to other people about global warming or veganism or how Obama's the Messiah. You know, and you don't have a problem fucking sitting on Facebook all day going, I hate Republicans. Hey, everybody, here's my fucking business website. Come buy my shit. You know, but if somebody says something you don't like, oh my God, fucking offended. You're going to fucking go cry a tear in your beer and shit. So anyhow, the question is, if you're a chick, you use this app, and you find out that the great one himself, 
would or would not bang you. Which would be more offensive to you, to find out that I would bang you or to find out that I would not bang you? So we'll see if that gets any responses and what people have to say. Because here's on Valentine's Day, on the day that the corporations give beta males all over the United States permission to spend large amounts of money on women in the hopes that they will get sex. Here's a question for you women, all you women out there who want free birth control. Now I have news for you. You already have free birth control. It's called your personality or maybe rather your lack of personality or maybe rather we could say your shitty personality because I know what many of you women think. Okay, and for those of you who are stupid, I'm not talking about all women. Okay, remember the, the, the rule around here that I should probably have to say every fucking podcast, but I don't because I know that there are two kinds of people out there. There's people that are too stupid to get it and I don't care about you and there's people that are smart enough to get it and I don't have to tell you this shit. But remember, if the shoe doesn't fit, don't try to stick your fucking foot into it. For many of you women out there, I know you think that every man alive wants to have sex with you, that you're so fucking hot, that your fucking vag is fucking lined with golden velvet or something, that your fucking pussy is just such a hot, rare commodity that every man out there just wants you. And, you know, they're all looking at you and just thinking about how much they want to have sex with you because you, your fucking pussy, your vagina is the center of the universe and everything revolves around it. I have bad, bad, bad news for you. Number one, evidence that women do not have math skills, okay? Your vagina is not in demand. Women outnumber men. 51%-ish of the population is female. 49 is male. That means there are more women than men. There is more vagina than cock. Okay? It's not vagina that's in demand. It's the cock because there's less cock than vagina. Basic math skills, basic economic skills, supply and demand. This is why women should not try to do math and should not try to worry about fucking economics. That'll piss off a bunch of them. <laughs> it's like my boy OG Furious says, women only have two compartments in their brain. One of them is for kitchen and the other one they don't use. Now that we've lost all of our female audience, Let's piss off the men. Oh, well, I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. So anyhow, women, you already have birth control. It's called your shitty ass personality. There are lots, and here's how this ties into Facebook. As I'm going through my Facebook female friends, looking at them and thinking, okay, would I bang this chick or not? And I knew this already, but I very quickly discovered, you know, reinforced, maybe is the best word to say, the fact that the number of women I would have sex with out of the number of women I know is really fucking small. And most of them that are excluded are not excluded because they're hideously ugly. <laughs> they're excluded because of their fucking personalities. They're excluded because of the kind of human beings they are. They're excluded because they have Obama posters on their wall. They're excluded because they're a bunch of harpies who run around whining about how all men are, are fucking rapist. You know, there are a bunch of people who believe that it's okay for Obama to murder people in foreign countries because he gave them free health care and he might give them free birth control. You don't need free birth control, honey. Just fucking be yourself. Any man who see I mean, there's lots of women I know. I see them like in the, I'm like, wow, she's hot. I would totally fuck her. I talked to her for five minutes. It's like, I never want to see this woman again in my life. And I'm sure it's not going to stick my dick inside of her. All you women have to do to avoid getting pregnant is just fucking be yourself. Because most of you out there are stupid, fucking selfish, self-righteous bitches. 
You don't need free birth control. You've already got it. It's built into you. Right? It's just like all these women you see out there protesting for the pro-abortion side. It's like almost all of these women are fantastically ugly. None of them are ever going to need an abortion. Because to get an abortion, you have to get pregnant. To get pregnant, you have to have sex with a man. No man is going to fuck most of you. You're ugly and your personality sucks. I mean, think about it. If the only thing you have to do with your life is stand around on a street corner with a sign that says pro-choice, how fucking interesting of a human being can you possibly be? Why would anybody want to fucking spend time with you? People who are doing things and accomplishing things and creating value for other human beings, basically people who don't get welfare checks every month, are out in the world doing things, experiencing things, creating things. They're doing stuff. They don't have time to stand around on street corners with a fucking sign. And just because I'm using the pro-abortion crowd for this, don't those of you who are anti-abortion and Tea Party and all this other shit, don't think that this excludes you. I don't give a fuck what's written on your sign. If you have time to stand on a street corner with a fucking sign in your hand, you're a fucking loser. It doesn't matter whether your sign says we should all suck Obama's cock or whether it says, you know, Obama is a war criminal. It doesn't fucking matter which fucking statist belief you're espousing on your placard. Okay, if you're standing on the street corner with a sign, you have no fucking life and you should get the fuck away from me. So there it is. Go and bang your friends on Facebook. If I, I think the URL for the app is bangyour, bangyourfriends.com. See, I can't even remember now because I don't pay attention to that shit. If I think about it, I will put a link in the show notes. In fact, let me write that on my list right now. Link to bang your friends. Show notes. Got it. Okay, so that was how my morning started off. It was awesome. Now it's time to go to the restaurant. It's a breakfast place here in town. Got there. They were pretty busy, which I expected. The restaurant was mostly full. I there were not people waiting outside to get in yet, which I kind of thought there would be. So we go into this restaurant. And, of course, they only have two servers because this restaurant has good food. But for some reason, they still haven't figured out how to staff enough people to ever fucking run the place. There's like one server there who doesn't suck ass. All the rest of them there are so fucking slow and retarded. It's just... It's painful, and we've tried for our little group, we've tried other places in town for our breakfast meetings, and we went to one other very popular place, and the experience was even worse for assorted reasons. Okay, you, have, Randy, have I ever told the biscuit story on stating the obvious? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell the biscuit story. I have to tell the biscuit story. Let me also say we went to another breakfast place in town, and I'm, I'm going to say the name of this breakfast place because I like it, which I guess, <laughs> I guess being liked by me is not something they would want the world to know because, after all, I'm an anarchist, and I believe in not using violence against other people, and I believe in freedom, and we know that those things are not the sort of viewpoints that are tolerated in our racist, sexist, hate-filled a society in which people who do things you don't like are people that should be killed. But anyway, I'm going to do it anyway. It's Bluebird Cafe right over on, what is it? It's on Laurel, just north of Colorado State University. I don't go there very often because I don't go to restaurants very often, but I've always had good service. The food, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I wouldn't say the food is 10 out of 10, but I would say the food is a pretty consistent 8.5 out of 10. And it's usually nice and quiet, especially a weekday, which I like at a restaurant. I like to be able to go, if I'm going to a restaurant with friends, I want to be able to have a conversation and hear them talk and things like that. I mean, God, what a concept. You actually, I actually want to talk to other people in real life instead of fucking uh, talking to them on my cell phone. What a concept. Anyhow, so that's that. We went to this other place. There's, here's the biscuit story, which did not happen today, but I have to tell the biscuit story because I love this fucking story. We go to this restaurant, 
and I order my food, and amongst all the food, I get a, this biscuit. The biscuits are good. They're huge. This was back in the days before I was cutting down on wheat in my diet. So I got this giant biscuit. And I knew I wasn't going to eat it because I shit ton of food, so I want to take it with me. So I said to the server, hey, can you take my biscuit and put it in a box for me? And she says, no, we can't do that. And I'm like, what? She says, but what we'll do is when you're ready to leave, we'll get a different biscuit for you and we'll put it in a box and you can take that one with you. And I was a little stunned and I just said, okay. And so they did. And this, um, this just amazes me because we, we sat there after the server walked away and we like looked at each other and we discussed this in depth. I'm like, so you can't take the biscuit that's in front of me, which I haven't touched, right? There's this biscuit, fresh biscuit sitting right here. I haven't eaten it. You can't put that in a box and let me take it with me. But you can put a different biscuit in a box and I can take that one with me. And so what are you going to do with this biscuit? Well, you can't give it to another customer. The only thing you can possibly do with this biscuit is throw it away. So you're going to waste food, right? Because, because there's homeless people starving all over America because of evil Republicans, even though the Messiah has been president for four years. And I, how can there can still be homeless people who don't have food? I don't know because I thought we lived in a fucking Messiah utopia. But I, it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? Take the fucking biscuit that's in front of me on the fucking plate and put it in a fucking box. Why, why are you going to waste a fucking biscuit? And this is a place that over the time, over the many years I have been past gone there, I hardly ever go there anymore, I can't figure out why, has raised their prices and removed things from the menu because they aren't making a profit. Well, I can give you some fucking clues as to why you're not making a profit. So that's the biscuit story. Anyways, we get to, I get to the restaurant this morning. It's pretty full. We tell them, okay, so then... <laughs> Now everything gets chaotic because I don't know what order to put things in. <laughs> it's like, at, at this point, shit just starts coming from all sides. So we don't really know for sure how many people we're going to have because seven people RSVP'd. We have these two fucking idiots. They might just be the two fucking vegan fanatics who always show up for breakfast, but they never fucking RSVP because, you know, they're, well, oh God, see, how do I... <laughs> There's 17 thoughts in my mind right now. So anyhow, we, we say, all right, we're going to have seven people. So they give us a booth that comfortably seats six. So we're sitting there, me and this one other person who showed up. So then the two vegans show up next, of course, who didn't RSVP. So now we know that odds are we're going to have more than seven people. So the vegans, so as tables are kind of clearing out in the restaurant, the vegans go over and take over another table. Basically, they go and seat themselves. Now, you can tell that these people either have never worked in a restaurant or simply don't give a shit about other people or have never worked in a restaurant and don't give a shit about other people, which is interesting because as you'll find out later, both of these vegan wackos are real big on the we, not me thing because they're both liberal Democrats and they're all about, how, oh yes, our society is deviating more towards not being selfish and thinking about the community. But of course, when they come in the restaurant and seat themselves and hijack other tables, you know, without consulting with the people who are running the restaurant and seating people because now a weight is starting to build up. See, but to them, to them, that's not selfish. And this is what I fucking hate about you goddamn status. This is my whole point when I say things like global warming wackos are opposed to greenhouse gases and burning fossil fuels unless, of course, it's them who are burning fossil fuels, right? So these two fucking vegan wackos who are all about the community and other people and win-win and all this other shit, you know, without, and they didn't do this just once. They did this multiple times. As our party grew, they were like taking over other tables. Even though, and finally the chick who's running the restaurant comes over and says, you can't keep doing this. I have people who are waiting for tables and you're fucking taking the table. She didn't say fucking, she should have. If this would have been my restaurant, 
I have been co-owner of a restaurant, by the way. I didn't just throw the motherfuckers out. It's like, for those of you who have never worked in a restaurant, here's a fucking tip for you. You don't go into a fucking restaurant unless it's a restaurant where you seat yourself. Some of them are. But if you go into a restaurant where you need to be seated by the staff, you don't fucking walk in there and seat yourself. You don't fucking go in there and sit down where the staff puts you and then just get up and move to another table on your own. This is a really good way to piss people off. I know you think it's no big deal. Okay, but let's pretend for a moment that you're not on welfare. Let's pretend that you own your own business. And then let's pretend that I come into your business and just start doing whatever the fuck I want. Would that piss you off? Probably so. Okay, people in restaurants who seat customers and when there's clients waiting in the waiting area to get a table, they have a system for coordinating what they're doing. And when you fucking take a table without asking, or when you move to another table, you fuck up their system, and you piss them off, and you're a selfish little fucking ass munchkin. And then, for you to sit at the fucking table with me and talk about win-win situations, and not being selfish, and we, not me, and all this other shit, you're just showing your fucking hypocrisy. You're showing how fucking selfish and stupid you are. And again, these are the same people, you know, they show up at the restaurant, they're like, well, we're here, we should get a table. Okay, well, the other people are here at the restaurant also. Not only you know, that, that the idea that somehow or another they're more entitled to a table than the other people at the restaurant, but here's the great part, is these two wackos didn't even RSVP with our group to say, hey, we're going to be there so we could add their numbers into the reservation. So they don't have to RSVP to show up, but when they do show up, the restaurant is supposed to drop everything they're fucking doing and make sure they get a table because they're so goddamn special. Because they're more special than the other people in the restaurant who came there to eat food. Just the fucking arrogance of these fucking people. They also, that one of the little vegan wackos also complained because this restaurant doesn't take reservations on weekends and holidays, which is pretty much standard practice at a whole shit ton of restaurants. I don't know what percentage, but I can tell you because restaurants recognize something. Okay, I, again, I've worked in a restaurant. I've been co-owner of a different restaurant. I know a little bit about restaurants. I'm not trying to say I am Mr. Fucking Restaurant Expert, but I can tell you some things about the restaurant business. People who make reservations don't always show up. And even when people show up and they say, oh, we're going to have 10 people, half the time they actually end up with six. Okay, I know it happens to me all the time because I go to restaurants with groups of people just like this one and we got our online thing. And like today, we had seven people RSVP, right? So we're going to have seven people. No, wrong. Because we had three people who did not RSVP. Oh, and get this. The other cocksucker who showed up without RSVPing, so the two cocksuckers who showed up without RSVPing first are the vegan wackos who can't fucking shut up about veganism, right? The third person who shows up without RSVPing is the fucking global warming wacko, the cocksucker that every conversation has to be steered towards global warming. Why is it that self-righteous religious motherfuckers who constantly have to shove their political, social, economic beliefs down other people's throats can't fucking RSVP on the goddamn internet like the rest of us can? I mean, again, you, you, if you look at these people, if you stand back and look at them, you will see that there are general trends about these people. People who are religious fanatics, you know, they can't even fucking RSVP that they're going to show up. So, gee, who's fucking things up here? So we think we're going to have seven because we got seven RSVP'd. We have three people show up that didn't RSVP and one person that did RSVP didn't show up. So we ended up with, oh, God, I got to do math. Oh, shit. Oh, 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 I'm a girl. I can't, I can't add. Ah, oh, um, ah. Oh. <laughs> we ended up with nine people when we thought we were going to have seven. All right, am I done? Was I done with that part? Wait, so like, oh, yes. So anyhow, the, I was talking about reservations. There was a point to this. So see, this is why restaurants 
don't take reservations on days they're going to be really busy because you have asshole fuckers who make reservations and then don't show up. And so you have a table sitting there empty while other people are waiting to get a seat. Or you have people who say, oh, we're going to have 10 people, but only six people show up. You just wasted four seats. Okay. The rest, the restaurant business understands that a customer standing in the restaurant waiting for a table is worth more than anybody who calls on the phone two days ahead of time and says, I'm going to come in on Saturday and I need a table for 10 because whether or not those people show up on Saturday is completely up in the air and whether or not they really have 10 people is completely up in the air. Nobody who runs a restaurant, I mean, unless it's like a really super expensive place where, or I mean, I'm going to say expensive. If your profit margin is such and the amount of money you have in the bank is such that you can, you know, lose out on some tables here and there, it's not that big a deal. But if you're having to actually make money and pay your employees, you know, and you're, you're still struggling, every fucking chair is worth money and you can't play this little fucking game. You know, and this little vegan wacko who's like, well, I'm here and I'm so important. And they, you know, that, that, that. Well, you know what? They're, if you if you look at the uh, front of the restaurant over there, honey, you'll see there's a whole bunch of people sitting there waiting for tables. They're just as important as you are. And their money is the same fucking color. You and your little fucking vagina and your fucking vegan attitude and your global warming wacko, and your we not me shit, you are not the fucking center of the fucking universe. Don't go into a fucking restaurant and act like the goddamn restaurant revolves around you. Now, having said that, this restaurant needs to get some fucking servers because there are only two people working when we got there and they're getting their asses handed to them. And the service there, as I said, except for one person who works there who's fucking awesome, the service there sucks balls. But the food is good, most of the time. So that's that. So then we have, as always, I got I got stuck between, oh God, I got stuck with the global warming wacko across from me and the two vegan wackos over on one side of me. And so most of my morning was listening to assorted political bullshit, some of which I'm just going to randomly cover. I thought it was interesting that so the global warming wacko the one of the vegan wackos brings up about how there are some glaciers that are expanding and some are retreating and the global warming wacko is well yes but the ones that are expanding are expanding slower than they have before and why yes th- th- this is my favorite because I don't want to do a global warming podcast here because there's no such thing as global warming but as I have said and will say in the future, the only people who deny climate change are global warming wackos because these are people who believe the climate didn't change until Ronald Reagan was elected or something like this. Because, of course, the climate has changed in the past and the idea that the climate is only changing now because of humans is, of course, obviously bullshit. The global warming wacko acknowledged that, why, yes, the climate in the past has changed. And yes, some glaciers are expanding while others retreat. But then he says this beautiful phrase. He says something to the effect of, but when we take the data about how humans are over... Take two. When we take the data about how humans are changing the climate and overlay it on what's happening, we can see that humans are changing the climate. And I'm thinking to myself, in other words, when you take your falsified data and you put that on top of what's really happening, you can falsify the data so it looks like humans are causing climate change. That's fucking awesome. So why don't you stop being a religious fanatic and why is it you can't go for a fucking hour and a half at breakfast without talking about global warming? Oh, that's right, because you don't have a fucking life. Oh, let's talk about Valentine's Day for a minute. Yes, so the restaurant was full of beta males who were spending a bunch of money on their women who were painted up with a bunch of makeup that made them look almost attractive. And these beta males were spending money on these women, desperately hoping that they were going to get laid. Because, of course, February the 14th is the day the corporations let you know that you should spend a lot of money trying to get sex. And, of course, we all know that women aren't whores. No, no, no. Because if I walk up to a woman and I say, hey, Alice, here, I'll give you $100 if you suck my dick. We all know she's a whore. However, if I take Alice to a restaurant 
give the restaurant a hundred dollars the restaurant gives Alice a glass of wine and a meal, and then we go home and Alice sucks my dick. Now suddenly she's not a whore because the money has been laundered, right? I wonder if, I wonder if drug dealers learned the skill from Valentine's Day. I mean, I don't know. So, ladies, if you sucked any dick on Valentine's Day after your beta male spent money on you, you're a whore. Just saying, okay? You are a whore. Not, and again, see, remember, I am the anarcho-capitalist here. I'm not passing, I, well, yes, I am passing a judgment here, but I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with being a whore. Okay, remember, you fucking women cannot shut the fuck up about how you own your body. You control your body. That's why you want free birth control and free abortions, because you control your body. I agree with you about the controlling your body part. I agree with you about owning your body. That's why, and understand everything I'm about to say. I am completely serious. All right, I don't you? I don't want to. I want to make sure you understand. This is not sarcasm. If you are a, even a man, it doesn't matter. If a, any person chooses to have sex with another person or people and receive money as compensation for that, I am completely okay with that. There's nothing wrong with that in an anarcho-capitalist environment. You own your body. If you willingly choose to have sex, say for example, Alice willingly chooses to have sex with me for $100. We're, this is great. We're, let's say we're, we're exchanging value. She values $100. I value having sex with her. She may enjoy having sex with me. She may not. But the point is, if she willingly Right? If she, I'm not using force. I'm not coherent, coercing, coercing. It's a new word, coercing. I'm not using coherence. I'm not forcing her. I'm not blackmailing her. Both of us are engaging in this out of our own complete free will. There is nothing, you know, there's no moral stain upon Alice here. There's nothing wrong with that. When it's wrong is when you woman... <laughs> Take two. When it's wrong is when you women run around screaming that you own your body when you clearly don't. The government owns your body. And at the same time saying, you know, that you're not a whore, that you don't take money for sex. But then, of course, on Valentine's Day, basically, you're taking money for sex. You're just laundering it through the restaurants and the flower shops and the candy stores and the movie theaters. And so your inability to actually recognize what you're doing and to perceive your own you know, existence, your complete, as I've said a gazillion times on this podcast, your complete lack of self-awareness. If you could just be honest with yourself and the rest of us, it wouldn't be a problem. But it's your inability to be honest about the fact that you're taking money for sex. It's your inability to be aware of the fact that you're a whore. And then, you know, again, like I, said, I am not putting the negative connotation on exchanging sex for money. Boom! All right, uh, sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> Thanks, for, I got distracted. Randy is telling me that we are getting short on time, as we are. Let me see. Where's my list? All right, so when we there was a discussion about some book called The Pendulum about how society swings back and forth between a me orientation and the we orientation, and I thought it was hilarious how one of the wackos was talking about how this is why the Republicans are dying is because the Republicans are all about me and Obama was all about we and people are all about we. For those of you who are all about we, I want to point something out to you. You can't have a sustainable, there's a buzzword for you, sustainable, you can't have a sustainable society in which everybody is about we because in our society right now, when somebody says they're about we, what that means when you translate it into English is that these people are about welfare. They're about getting things for free from the government. They're about getting things that other people create. They're about receiving. They're about distributing evenly across society. Here's the problem with that. If you have a society that is composed entirely or primarily of takers, where are you going to get the stuff to take? The only way you can redistribute wealth is if you have somebody who is quote-unquote me-oriented that creates wealth. 
The only way to have, you can't have a society where you give people money and you give people free health care and you give people free birth control if there you know, aren't some people in that society creating wealth and creating health care and providing health care and providing birth control and doing all the work which is involved in doing these things, which of course, liberal Democrats, the fucking welfare types, the people who run around spewing shit like we, not me, these are people who aren't creating any fucking value for anyone. That's why they're so obsessed with the redistribution of wealth. That's why they're so obsessed, because they don't have any, they don't create any. That's why they're so obsessed with getting free health care, because they can't afford health care because they don't create wealth for anybody, so they don't get paid. This is why they need free birth control, because they can't buy their own birth control, because they don't have any money, because they don't create value for other people. Okay? I hate to break this to you fucking weirs, but you weirs, if you don't have the mirrors to actually create things for you to steal from them, you're not going to have anything. Another great thing that was said is that you can't be dumb and be a serial killer. And I heard this, I almost fell out of my chair, because look at Hussein Obama. This motherfucker is a goddamn idiot, and he is murdering thousands and thousands of people. The war on drugs, the war on terrorism, flying robots in foreign countries. This motherfucker is so goddamn stupid, you know, he, he can't even fucking talk. Listen to his speeches. Everything he says is fluff bullshit. And when he doesn't have his teleprompter, he's a complete blathering idiot. He's almost as bad as Bush. I don't think anybody will ever be as bad as Bush. Bush was awesome. God, the Bushisms. The terrorists never stop thinking of ways to harm the American people, and neither do we. That's like my favorite Bushism ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever. I can't talk. Because it was true. Oh, my God. And then, of course, Dick Cheney in his undisclosed location. <laughs> All right. The other thing we discovered is that we need more girls in sciences because, of course, we can't, we can't allow people to choose for themselves what they want to do with their life. No, no, no. We need to find a way to convince more females to go into math and science. Ah, yes, the beauty of central planning. There's some freedom for you. And, of course, I also discovered that the reason people aren't interested in science anymore is because Star Trek is no longer on the air. Hmm. Yes, Star Trek isn't there to get people interested in math and science. Well, gee, I don't know. Maybe that's just another admission that 12 fucking years of public education is failure after failure. If the fucking public education system is so great, why can't it get people to be interested in math and science? Oh, that's right. Because the public education system is busy teaching people that Republicans hate women and that global warming is caused by Republicans and that anybody who's an anarchist wants to break windows and shoot people in the streets. And what you need to do is you need to suck Obama's cock because Obama is the source of free health care and free birth control. And he is the Messiah.